Hey guys, how's it going? It's Leon here. In this video, I'm going to talk about the wholesome and badass version of the INFP and how these two versions look like. So in a previous video, I talked about how each type has a wholesome and badass version of themselves and a wholesome version will appear like one type and a badass version will appear like another type. So with the INFP, the wholesome version of the INFP appears like an ISFJ and a badass version of the INFP appears like an INTJ. So you could have two INFPs that could look very different, but taking on the qualities of these two different types. So let's look at what an ISFJ-like INFP looks like. Well, something that I've noticed is that there's actually a group of INFPs that smile quite a lot. So people often associate introverted feeling with not smiling. But in my real world observations of INFPs, uh, there's a group that appears to smile quite frequently. It's not like a really like broad smile necessarily, but it's a very simple smile. But the INFP tends to keep up the smile. And this version of the INFP is ISFJ like they appear to be ready to meet and adjust to people's needs in a moment. They seem pretty pleasant and kind. They have a very inviting demeanor, cooperative and welcoming, uh, and also very charitable too. And there's something that you could see that's a particular characteristic of this INFP is that they could appear kind of diffident. Like for instance, if someone's telling a joke, they readily laugh at that joke. It's almost like a very F.E. kind of behavior. But I notice this in particular with this grouping of INFPs. It doesn't matter if the joke is funny or not, this INFP, because of kind of being um, socially aware, is uh, would be laughing alongside with that person. Um, this type of INFP does not seek to stand out. It could seem very, um, almost like mundane, almost doesn't really like, where necessarily where things that really stand out so much. And when they write emails, their emails can be friendly. It could have like exclamation points. It can even have enthusiasm. And um, when they're listening to someone, they're really good listeners. They nod readily uh, and they focus on the needs of others and how to adapt to them. So they appear very chameleon like. So uh, this is the wholesome version of the INFP, and I usually recommend that, you know, what happens is that we often disintegrate into the badass version. So if you're feeling like you're disintegrating, it's kind of good to kind of build in these ISFJ-like wholesome characteristics if you're an INFP. However, this could go too far. So the problem of taking on so much of the ISFJ archetype is that this version of INFP become too eager and re ready to, to please and overly humble and conforming and not willing to stand out, not willing to uh, work outside the confines of the system and not challenge the system. And they might even be confined to doing really humble tasks for others, like doing kind of mundane work for others. So this is when they kind of need to develop more of their INTJ badass side. So what's going on here? Why is this the wholesome version of the INFP? Well, basically, I, I kind of mentioned the theory behind this in my last video about wholesome and badass types. But basically, it comes down to this. The third function of the INFP is introvert sensing. And often, it could come off as kind of childish, like the INFP seeks introvert sensing from others, basically needing other people to take care of them, wipe their ass, etc. But like when INFP learns to adult with introvert sensing, which is the primary function of the ISFJ, um, they're going to start to seem more mature. And they start to learn how to take care of introvert sensing related um, tasks. And when the INFP could cover introvert sensing, it makes up for their very weak expert sensing. So something I often say in this channel is that we have a function called the polar function, which is very weak in the type. And for the INP, that is extroverted sensing. And But if the INP develops introvert sensing, it makes up for the lack of extroverted sensing because it by developing introvert sensing, it covers the sensing arena. So what happens is the INP seems sensible and able to take care of matters of the world. Uh, when they get into introvert sensing, and it kind of camouflages the lack of expert sensing. And also, 
the INFP develops extroverted feeling, which is the secondary function of the ISFJ. So extroverted feeling dimensionalizes introverted feeling, the primary function of the INFP. The INFP has one side of the picture when it comes to feeling, but when they dimensionalizing dimensionalize it by expressing the inner emotions, then uh, they seem a lot better developed. And that's why you see all these extroverted feeling like behaviors of the INFP is feeling that is expressed out into the world. Finally, with this version of the wholesome version of the INFP, I would like to give an example. I think Audrey Hepburn is an INFP and she exemplifies this ISFJ-like characteristic. She is not a unhealthy person at all. She, I think she's actually very healthy and very mature. She ex exemplifies the best aspects of an ISFJ-like INFP. Hey guys, I want to take a little break here to encourage you to follow my writing on Instagram. I'm going to read a little piece here. If I learned anything, courage never presents itself in the same way across people and rarely in the narrow superhuman sense. It comes from people quietly enduring their own individual struggles of experiences we do not know. Thus, there's always something to learn from others. I have my Instagram page down below in the description box. Now I want to talk about the other type of INFP, the INTJ-like INFP, when the INFP is a badass. So when the INFP goes into the ISFJ direction, they seem very well adapted to society and uh, appealing in that manner. But INFPs, when they take on the INTJ characteristics, they can kind of appear rather enticing. But at the same time, this is the direction by which INFPs start to uh, disintegrate. And the reason for this is that this is when INFPs embrace their shadow expert thinking, their inferior function, and also their introvert intuition as well. And when that happens, the INFP starts to lose grip on reality. They kind of um, dissociate from reality, fully immersed in the realm of ideas and not like really um, taking care of their own survival skills so much. Uh, no, they're not engaged in day-to-day -day living and very much torn away from the world. And this type of INFP does not appear very open-minded, and it could be rather strict and finicky with their own boundaries. This is where the expert thinking comes in. This inferior expert thinking comes out, and what happens is that this type of INFP could be kind of avoidant of people and rather unforgiving around their boundaries. And when INFPs kind of get into the grip of expert thinking, they might even forget about their own introverted feeling. They become rather insensitive and they might start to treat people like strategic resources in order to reach goals, ends, and objectives. And you almost get the feeling that the movement, movement of feeling is kind of away from you, right? And I'll give you an example. So the way that this type of INFP writes emails is different from the first INF grouping of INFPs I was talking about. Their emails tend to be rather terse and lacking in amiability. They're not really responsive. And not that's not only in their writing when they're writing emails or text, but also comes off in speech as well. In fact, this type of INP appears rather brooding and not smiling at all. And you, you kind of get the feeling that you have to kind of earn their attention. And uh, there's something about intro intuitive types. If you look at the NJ types, um, the NJ types kind of act like they kind of belong in an elite intellectual class. And the thing is, INTPs and INFPs secretly have very strong introvert intuition, but they don't value introvert intuition. So a lot of them tend not to have as much of, give off much of that tendency of elitism as the NJs, but still a number of INFPs and INTPs, they do. If they kind of get into their introvert intuiting side, they could feel like they're part of an elite class. And when they get into that intro intuition, what happens is that this version of the INFP starts to be uh, rather snobbish and views others as being rather simple or that they're simpletons or as people who are less than than themselves. They could be rather dismissive of others and they could even get rather dis misanthropic, uh, judging or critical of society. And when they kind of really tap into that intro intuition side, they get can seem rather weird and eccentric, and they have their boundaries up 
high. That's where the ex extrovert thinking comes from. However, there's a positive side to the the badass version of the INFP. I think it's actually to some extent healthy to develop this side, especially when the ISFJ side starts to become too strong. Because when the INFP takes up the ISFJ side, yes, they could um, seem um, wholesome in the eyes of society, but at, at the same time, their life starts to feel kind of stale and also one-dimensional. And when you get into the more of that shadow side of yourself, you the shadow side of yourself is actually what kind of creates more depth into the personality. So there's positive sides of the INTJ-like INFP. And one of this is that they're willing to embrace their own intellectuality. So like when INFP kind of goes into the ISFJ side, um, they could come off as rather simple. But then when INFP kind of gets embraces the INTJ side, they become more intellectual and they could seem like they're full of ingenious ideas and theories and insights into society and how to break away from the confines of society in terms of the way society thinks in limited ways. And they're also able to hold to a vision in life and start committing to it when they INFPs embrace their introverted intuiting side. The other thing about the INTJ-like INFP is that they could seem more like exciting and edgy, but at the same time, it's important to remember it's easy to kind of disintegrate into this version of the INFP. And that's where building that balance comes in. I think INFPs could go through phases of their life where they're more ISFJ-like or more INTJ-like. I felt like in the past, I was more INTJ-like, and then later on, I became more ISFJ-like. And these days, I'm kind of integrating both of them. So I'm kind of bringing in the best of both worlds. And for an example of an INTJ-like INFP, I would say Albert Camus, it would be an example of it, and you could you could actually compare how Audrey Hepburn comes off as compared to Albert Camus. And I believe that Albert Camus is a healthy representative of the INTJ-like INFP. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my content, click like and subscribe.